Are you planning on moving to Little Neck or Great Neck in Virginia Beach? Well, I wanna talk all about those two areas today and compare the two. We're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And if it's your first time, welcome. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and really the like button. If you like the video you're watching now, hit that like button. It really helps me and it tells the YouTube algorithms that I'm doing a great job. Well, today we're talking about Little Neck and Great Neck. I've mentioned these in different ways before in other videos. I get questions often about these two areas. People wanna to move to one or the other, but there are various things to factor into each area as far as determining if it's best for you to live in. So that's what we're gonna get into today. We're gonna to get into the neighborhoods themselves. I'll do some drive-throughs uh, and we'll talk about the real estate prices and the cost differences between each area and the school districts and the lifestyle. Like what is it, what's the general feel of each area? And we'll talk about the amenities of the area too. Like what's within easy, quick access to these two places. And I'll do some pros and cons about each area and compare them to each other. And including in those pros and cons will be talk about the jet noise factor and if these uh, areas are influenced by jet noise, and if so, how much? Well, first of all, before anything else, where are they? Well, if you look on the map, there's the Interstate 264 that goes directly from the beach on the east side all the way to downtown Norfolk on the west side into Norfolk. Well, just north of that, in the north central area of Virginia Beach, is Great Neck and Little Neck. And you see those two necks right there. As you drive towards the beach, you'll see Little Neck on the left-hand side, and it's kind of like a big peninsula, like a cul-de-sac, a huge cul-de-sac. And going, going past Little Neck towards the beach, you'll get to Great Neck, which is just past that on the left also. And as you're driving in these areas, there are a lot of similarities, so it feels like they kind of blend together in some ways, but there are a lot of differences. Now, driving from here to, for instance, Oceana, the drive to Oceana is not that far, especially to Great Neck. Great Neck is only about five to 10 minutes or so from Oceana. It's only about maybe two or three minutes farther uh, to there from uh, Little Neck. Now you're also close to Town Center, uh, which is only several minutes away also, the downtown area of Virginia Beach. And to the beach, Great Neck's closer, but they're both still between eight to 12 minutes or so to the ocean front. You're only about five minutes away from the closest interstate interchange uh, to get to Norfolk or to, to the beach. Now for neighborhoods, one thing I'll mention first is that I get a lot of people asking me questions about Little Neck and Great Neck specifically because of the water access. These are some two of the most common and popular areas for waterfront that's not too close to the oceanfront kind of vibe. You're getting off the ocean front a little bit, and, but you're also getting the waterfront access, inlets and river access that you really can't find in a lot of places in Virginia Beach. Well, we'll start with Little Neck. And I talk a lot about the area of Little Neck uh, and the history about Little Neck, and I, I'll put the video up here specifically about Little Neck, but the neighborhoods in Little Neck, there are some great ones in here, and they span different price ranges. Now, there are a lot fewer neighborhoods in Little Neck compared to Great Neck. Uh, mainly it's because there's just more land in Great Neck than Little Neck. When you look at Little Neck, there are some real nice ones. Some of my favorites, on the low end, you're talking anywhere from 300 to 400. Uh, that's the base level, some of these uh, entry level neighborhoods. For instance, places like Kings Forest and Malibu, these areas on the, on the, are on the western side of Little Neck, uh, but they're right on the, on the edge there. But if you go further up north, the further north you go, the larger the houses are usually, the larger the lots are, the more access you have to water. Neighborhoods like Little Haven, Little Neck Cove, uh, Bishop's Gate is on the south end, but also one of my favorites is Middle Plantation, which is on the uh, northeastern side of Little Neck. Kings Grant is one of the larger uh, neighborhoods in here that's on the uh, western side of Little Neck. Uh, but there are several others, and you'll see that there's some real nice neighborhoods. And you can almost feels like when you're in this area, it's like the, the it's like it's in a neighborhood that's cut out of a forest. The further north you go into Little Neck, and then they go up to 400, 500 pretty easily. And when you get up into the northern part. Of the, of the area, it starts at 500, 600, and goes up to over a million, and really up to over four, five, six million in some places, right on the water. And they start like in the low, like uh, 2,000 square feet or so. They go up to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 plus. Uh, but the media area, you're talking anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 3, square feet or so. That's most of the houses in here in that middle price range, like 450, 500 to 700. There are a lot more ranch style in here as well, especially on the west side of Little Neck. Most of these are built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s also. That's what makes the ranch style also more prevalent. But if you go over to Great Neck, Great Neck has more land, more neighborhoods, and more everything. There are condos that start even in the low 100s, two bedroom condos.
condos. Those condos and townhouses can go up to 250 to 300 in some places and a little bit higher than that. But these single family houses start in the 300 range as well, go up to several million dollars. Most of the neighborhoods in here start around the 350 to 400 price range and go up to like seven, 800. And in that same kind of style and size as you would find often in Little Neck, there's just more opportunities over here to find properties. Now you might see in some cases, the price ranges drift up a little bit compared to Little Neck. And because of that, more opportunity for waterfront also. Neighborhoods like Lincoln, Point of Woods, uh, Lincoln Estates, a lot of great neck neighborhoods, Meadows, Manor, uh, Point, uh, Great Neck Farms, uh, then there's Broad Bay Colony, which is a great one. Allenton, one of my favorites. Heron's Cove, Hidden Shores, a lot of them. And then a couple of my other favorites, Wimbledon is on the north side of Great Neck, as well as Green Hill Farms. Two of these are like, they're just awesome. Like the trees are immaculate, incredible. The neighborhoods are so quiet, love it. Some of these, like I said, they're gonna be up seven, 800, 900,000, million plus. And some of these houses are upwards of 10,000 square feet. Some of those ones on the water. But if you want something that's more affordable, like a condo, townhouse, you'll have more options in the great next side in that under 300 price range, just because there's more opportunity there and more houses. And there are some single family houses that are in both uh, areas that are under 300. There's just fewer of them. Uh, and some of the quality, you might see a difference in the styles of houses under 300,000 in Great Neck. But the locations are amazing. So for the price that you're paying, you do get a lot for it. Now lifestyle, what are the differences between both of these areas? They're very similar in a lot of ways. You'll notice that Little Neck has a different feel, a different quieter, feel than it might uh, in some places a Great Neck. Not necessarily the neighborhoods themselves. Once you drive off of the, the main roads off of Great Neck, First Colonial Road is one example, as well as Great Neck Road. Once you get off of those roads in Great Neck, uh, the neighborhoods feel like, you know, you feel like you're in a real quiet neighborhood, because it is, it's real quiet, real tucked away. But once you get back on Great Neck and First Colonial Road, those two primary roads in Great Neck, there are a lot of strip malls, lots of just, it's, it's a little bit busier. There's just more cars that drive from the south side of Great Neck up to the north, because with Great Neck, that area connects to the north side of Virginia Beach and the central side. That 264 side on the bottom uh, and the, the north side near Shore Drive, those two areas are connected by Great Neck. There's also less strip malls, less of everything right in Little Neck compared to Great Neck. Great Neck has its own kind of like uh, community there as far as like there's shopping this close by. There's just more activity on those main roads because this whole area is kind of like a glorified cul-de-sac. So when you're driving into Little Neck, you're only going up, especially into the northern spots, if you have to. You don't have any other access to other parts of Virginia Beach. So that really makes it nice for people that are living up in this top area because there's not as much traffic the further north you go. So if you just want neighborhoods, you kind of just want the, the tucked away vibe, you might like Little Neck more than Great Neck. Now let's talk about schools. Um, uh, in Great Neck, there are only two high schools that serve this, this area, First Colonial and Cox. But on the Little Neck side, it's those two schools in addition to that, Princess Anne. They also have similar uh, middle schools, Great Neck Middle and Lynn Haven Middle are both serving both of Great Neck and Little Neck. But uh, there's one difference in both of these. Virginia Beach Middle is servicing Great Neck and Little Neck has Independence Middle. Now elementary schools, Great Neck has several because there's just more people there. Trantwood, Allenton Elementary, Lincoln Park Elementary, Kings Grant Elementary, and John B. Day, which is, which is on the north side of Great Neck. And Little Neck, there are fewer. Kingston and Kings Grant Elementary. Then I'll drop links for all of these schools on the, in the description below so you get more ideas and more information from niche.com. Now amenities, amenities, this is where some of the differences lie. Now, if you want more action, more stuff to do, and it's real close by, Great Neck is your first option. There are more parks in this area, more neighborhood parks, and there's a golf course that's, that's in the north uh, side of Great Neck called Broad Bay Country Club. There's shopping in Great Neck also, up and down Great Neck, and also you're close to Hilltop, which is the shopping center that's on the south side of Great Neck. And you're also closer to, like for instance, a Walmart, and Lynn Haven Mall is one that's close uh, to you also, the largest mall in Virginia Beach. And for Christmas lights, one of me and my wife's favorite places to go see Christmas lights is in Wimbledon, uh, the neighborhood of Wimbledon, and Green Hill Farms, which is across the street. Those two are lit up so, so tastefully. Now on the Little Neck side, there's just less going on because it's more neighborhoods, which if you like that, is, you're gonna love this. But there's not as much in Little Neck to do right in Little Neck. You have to go outside of Little Neck to do anything else, and especially shopping, like if you wanna go to Hilltop, you're close to Hilltop, a few minutes away. You're also close, like I said, Town Center. Both areas 
areas are so close that it's not that much different. So unless you really want to be within super close distance to shopping, you're not going to have a, too much trouble getting to somewhere from Little Neck that you would also want to get to from Great Neck. Now, as far as swim and racket clubs, there's also one in Little Neck as well as there are a couple uh, clubs in uh, the Great Neck area uh, that have different amenities also. So if I was going to give some pros and cons, general pros and cons about Great Neck, this is what I would say. Some of the pros are you're closer to the beach. You know, you're several minutes away from the beach and you're closer to the beach than Little Neck. Little Neck. On top of that, you have more access to things. For instance, you have drive access to the north and south side of Virginia Beach quicker than you would with Little Neck. It also has more waterfront because there's more land, there's more waterfront in this area. And another pro is it's closer to Hilltop. I mean, I, I think that it's not that much difference, but if you're gonna have an easy access to drive, it's nice the fact that you can get right on to Great Neck and get from neighborhood that you're in and get down to Hilltop pretty easily. Which has a lot of stores in it that you might like. For instance, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Target, etc. Now the cons. This is one thing I want to mention that's very important. One of the cons I would say is it's within the uh, higher noise zone rating in the area. It has higher likelihood of having jet noise. I'm gonna drop a link below for the noise zone map that is used in this area to show where the most activity is for noise and jet noise in this area. Oceana Naval Air Station is just south of this area and the flight path crosses over sections of Great Neck. This is important because if you don't want any jet noise sounding at all, you might want to be aware that the noise can seep into parts of Great Neck pretty easily. Now, the frequency of the jets is not so much that it's like, it's not deafening all the time, but at least once or twice a day is a good chance you'll hear about 30 seconds of jet noise, and it can be really loud if it's close. And so you might be able to have to stop your conversation when you're having a conversation with somebody in that area and then wait for the jet to finish and then come back to what you were talking about. If the noise does bother you, this could be a reason to go to Little Neck compared to Great Neck. Now, locals don't factor this in as much, I would say, because a lot of people here are used to it. But if you're from a different area and you're here for the first time, it might be kind of alarming. Another con is that it is uh, further away from other parts of Virginia Beach. It's closer to the beach, which is great, but it's also further away uh, from like, for instance, Norfolk, and it's just further away from the rest of Hampton Roads. So you're kind of choosing to be further into the corner of Virginia Beach, and there's, there's a trade-off for that. Now, Little Neck. The pros for living in Little Neck, I would say, number one, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper than living in Great Neck. Uh, not, not so much cheaper that you'll notice a significant difference in the higher price ranges, but on average, you might pay a little bit less for a house in Little Neck than you would in Great Neck. It's more centrally located. It's more, it's closer to the rest of Virginia Beach compared to Great Neck. It's also close to Town Center, which to me is a, is a nice factor. And there's lots of trees in Little Neck. There are also a lot of trees in Great Neck, but the types of trees in Little Neck are nice because it feels like you're kind of driving through a forest in a sense. It's really cool. I like the vibe in Little Neck myself. And another pro is that there's no jet noise. So you're just far enough away from the jet noise areas uh, that you won't really hear it at all. There might be some right in the very corner of Little Neck a little bit, but it's not enough to even notice. It's much different than when you're going just farther east into Great Neck. And it's less developed. This is a great thing because, you know, again, it feels like you're just driving through neighborhoods. It's, it's real nice. And uh, if you do want some more quiet, and fewer cars, I think this might be a spot that you might like compared to Great Neck. Now the cons to the living in Great Neck, I would say one of them is your accessibility. Once you're in Little Neck, you have to drive down to get out. So the access to the north side of Virginia Beach is, an, is a downside. And because it's a smaller area, there are fewer neighborhoods, which is a bummer too, less options. And in addition to that, there's also less waterfront. So if you do want the waterfront aspect, you'll have more options going to Great Neck than you would Little Neck. And the other thing is you're farther from the beach. So not only can you not, you're not get up to the north side, uh, the, those beaches up there easily, uh, it's a little bit further to get to the ocean front and any, any other beach on that side as well. So if you want beach access quicker and easier, I think picking Great Neck will give you some more options there. So there are pros and cons to both, uh, but people love them both. So either one can be a win for you. Uh, if you have any questions about these areas and want to go into more detail, please let me know. I'll drop my contact information in the description and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.